What is up, Star Seeds? It's still spooky season, so I wanted to do a video on Ouija boards. Now, I do not touch Ouija boards, and I will tell you why later in this video, but I do love being around them. Not gonna lie, I find it super exciting being in the same room and asking questions, hearing the answers. Usually, if I'm there and a Ouija board is being used, I will be fully focused sending good love and light energy everywhere and just be so interested in what whoever's coming through has to say because I'm the medium girl I love channeling in any way even if I'm not the one actually touching it I will still be the one having a conversation so yeah even though Ouija boards are definitely not my chosen way of communicating whatsoever if I'm at a party and it's being used, I like being there. So here we go. This is Ouija boards, spirit boards, talking boards, whatever you want to call them, how to use them properly, and why I don't. <laughs> a Ouija board is usually a board. You can get them at Target, literally in the kids game section. That right there blows my mind. This is a mediumship tool sold at um, Target in the kids game section. So regardless of that fact, you can go to Target if you really want to and go buy one. Um, I would sage the hell out of it first. Amazon has them, witch shops have them, or you could go the natural route and make them using organic materials. Personally, if I were to use a spirit board, I would just go outside, clear off a patch of dirt, and just write it in the ground. Letters, numbers, yes, no, goodbye, use a little crystal as my planchette, and I'm good to go. There's a ton of different ways to make these. You can write your board on a piece of paper, and you can use a shot glass as the planchette. Back in the olden days, they didn't even have the planchettes. It was like a board and a little pokey thing. So honestly, if you would rather not even use a planchette and use something else to kind of poke where you feel the energy is going, that works too. It's however you feel because these have been around forever. They're going to be around forever. I totally see how they got invented. Like anyone could have thought of this if you were communicating with a spirit somehow without a board and you needed a medium for them to go through you can just write out yes or no somewhere and have them you know go to which answer it is you can write out letters and have them spell something out for you that's how this board got invented duh so by you know the 1800s it really picked up pace by the 1900s it was patented in Baltimore and in 1967, Ouija outsold Monopoly. Ouija is said to be the French word and the Dutch word for yes put together. Um, it's also said to have picked its own name when people were playing it and asked what it wanted to be called. Um, lots of different little conspiracy theories surrounding this game that is really a tool. It's a medium. It's it's like a, uh, what's a good word for it, man? Like, English is so hard. Language is so hard to communicate all of your emotions. And even using the board is just the beginning to communicating with spirits. That's the main reason why I don't like using them. It's pretty limited. It's a good tool to use to an extent, but let's face it, I am clairsentient, I'm claircognizant, I'm clairvoyant, I'm clairaudient, I'm clairgustient too sometimes. Like, we have all of these psychic senses, everyone does. So the fact that we need a board to communicate is really just not living up to our full potential, honey. Like, you don't need that. It's a good way to start off contact. I, I don't touch Ouija boards like I've said, but 
I've been in the room where my sisters have definitely used the board to spark up the contact, and then it was one of the most insightful days of my life after that. You know, we put the board away, and once the spirits were all there, and then we were just talking regularly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's definitely a tool that can be useful to spark up the conversation with good spirits. You don't want to let out something bad, so it's important to play by the rules. All common sense morals should still be in action while playing this board. You don't want to be disrespectful to a spirit because you don't want to piss a spirit off. I think that's all I really have to say for that one. Not to mention following the three rules of the Ouija. So, one, you don't want to play alone. Two, you don't want to play in a graveyard. And three, you don't want to forget to say goodbye. Now, there are important reasons for each of these rules. You don't want to play alone because that makes you a target. If you want things to happen and your life is stress-free enough for them to happen and for you to be able to handle it, then they will happen. You want people around you to feel safe. You want people around you so they can see what happens too, so you don't sound crazy when you're talking about this later. And you want to believe yourself. You don't want yourself to think it's crazy. You want people to validate your experience, especially if this is one of your first times doing it. Um, Plus, it's just you're going to physically feel safer. Like, I would feel safe doing something paranormal at a house where I know I could be like, Dad, like, this ghost is scaring me. Like, that's my protector. You want to have someone around you where you're just going to feel safe, even if it's some stupid little kid feeling of having someone next to you. When you're in a paranormal situation, having another human next to you is going to be comforting. I don't care who you are, it's going to be comforting. Two, you don't want to play in a graveyard. A graveyard, by the way, is any place where someone has died. Literally, like if someone's died in the house and you play in that house, that house is a graveyard. You're technically breaking a rule, like the movie. But um, you don't want to play in an actual graveyard either because that is a space where a lot of people are, like, buried who have died. And that's just a lot of, like, vessels there. Spirits are still roaming there, and they can come through that board. Um, That board has access to a great range of frequencies, including the negative ones, and you don't want to summon a negative one. Three, saying goodbye is very important because it cuts off the energetic tie um, of the board being used. It closes the energetic door, okay? It shuts the board off by saying goodbye for a moment of time until you're playing it again. If you don't say goodbye, that board is still on it's still in use and that spirit is still actively coming through it that door is still open it's like the winter and you walk inside your house and you just never shut the door like that cold air is still gonna come in you might get snow in there you might have a bat fly in you might have a freaking raccoon come in you never know So, you need to say goodbye, you need to shut the door on your way back in, especially if it's the winter. So, especially if you're communicating with a negative spirit, you really want to remember to say goodbye. But, even on a nice day, you really want to shut the door when you come inside. You don't want a fly to fly in. Um, Even if you're connecting with a good spirit, you need to cut that tie off. Don't let anyone trick you. Um, That's the other thing about these boards. This is the very important thing. Like I've said, there's an access to this great range of frequencies, and this is why I don't use Ouija boards. I've had experiences with Ouija boards, um, 
this led to good experiences after in the day, but during the part of the Ouija board, we put that Ouija board away for a reason, you guys. There was a reason we put that away, and it wasn't just because we could do stuff without it. It was because the Ouija board was making it negative, and it was bringing through a bunch of other people who we did not need there. Um, it wasn't just the lady we wanted to talk to. It was a bunch of other people, and you have control over who you talk to. So if there's a spirit you don't want there, you need to politely tell them, you know, you need to calm down or leave and then be like, okay, we're done here. Like, I wish you love and light, but goodbye. Um, that's all you need to say. And if something happens where they aren't going away, then you need to banish them. All you need to do is listen to yourself at any point in time. So if you're having an experience and you don't know what to do, pause, meditate <laughs> for five seconds. That's really all you need. Just breathe, honey. Let spirit tell you what to do. Always evaluate everything for yourself. So only have it be your guides tell you what to do. Only trust the highest, highest vibration you get. Only trust your highest self and go with that gut instinct, okay? Know when it's time to not play. Know when you have friends with you that shouldn't be playing. Be smart about it. Don't feel like you have to play if other people are playing, okay? That's a big thing. If you're at a party and everyone's like, let's do the Ouija board, and you don't want to, you can sit there and you don't have to touch it. If you don't want to be around it, you can come up with the reason to leave, okay? And there's times where I don't even want to be around it too. I know I said I love being around it, but trust me, there's also definitely been instances where I'm like, no guys, tonight, like, I don't even want to be around it. Like, I don't even think you should. I don't think it's a wise night for you guys to be doing that. But if you want to, that's fine. But you heard it from me, the one that actually has a YouTube on this stuff, that I don't think you should. So that's just my opinion. And then, you know, something bad happened that night. And that's just why you always have to go with your gut. You should not be playing this with people who don't have good intentions. And you should not be playing this if you don't have good intentions for it yourself. Um, a very important thing to do before using a Ouija board is setting the good intentions. As you guys can tell, it's getting pretty late. But I want to tell you how to actually set up this whole Ouija experience. Making sure you really set the mood, dim the lights, light the candles, grab your friend's hands, say a little mantra, prayer, whatever you want to call it. Um, setting the intention is what you could call it. Um, just make sure you say, we call upon spirits of light, high dimensional beings. Um, making sure you have like a black candle going possibly or um for protection you could have a white candle going for like pure light spirit energy to be channeled through you could have them both going if you do this i recommend lighting the white candle first then the black candle and then when you blow them out blow the black candle out first then the white candle or do this the other way make sure whatever candle you lit first is the one that goes out last okay this is important if you're using a ouija board specifically with these two candles and specifically if you are doing this with a witch that is a salem descendant okay this is a whole nother topic that i will talk about in the future because i have experience with family um, descendants of Salem witches. I am not a Salem witch descendant, but I have friends who they all are. So that is how I know a lot about that. I was more into mediumship, but I got into more of the witchy stuff, knowing them. And that is how I really was around Ouija boards at first. So setting the intention is the most important thing and 
closing, making sure you know, you say thank you for communicating with us, blow out your candles when you close. I feel like that really helps just cut the energy off to make sure you go back to your life. And if you still want candles going, like, after you're done, like, it's okay to blow out those candles that you had going while you were doing this, and then light a different candle, or light the same candle, but let just a minute go by, you know? Just refresh the energy. Sage that shit when you're done, okay? Like, <laughs> clear that board off when you're done with it, making sure everything is just clean. It's literally like surgery. You want to make sure everything is sterilized before and after, okay? Because you don't know what was coming through before and you don't know what's going to come through after, so you just got to make sure everything is cleansed, honey. That's important. Making sure you yourself are cleansed before and after. What I mean by that is it can be very emotional communicating with spirits, so after you're done with this, you need to just take a bath, get some rose quartz, honey, like, make sure you're good, whatever you need to do to kind of rejuvenate, but during this actual experience, making sure you keep your hand on the planchette is important, um, taking breaks all together if you really need to take your hands off of it, that's cool, but don't just, like, one person be like, hang on, I'm tired, no, um, <laughs> don't look through it unless you're prepared to shit your pants because even if they're not going to actually show you um someone or something through that when you look at it they know that you're like okay I want to see something so they're gonna flick a light or do something to let you know they're there so if you pick up that thing and want to look through it you're telling them do something scary basically and they will um, it's like a challenge. Don't challenge the spirits because they usually 99% of the time accept, especially if it's through a Ouija board. We're talking about Ouija boards today, so if you challenge a spirit through a Ouija board, they're gonna accept because it's the type of spirit that's waiting on the other side of that board. When you all first put your hands on the planchette, you don't really want to move it around in circles. Some people say you want to do three circles or something to kind of activate this. If nothing's happening, that's cool. Um, it doesn't do any harm, really. But I would say just leave your hand there. Wait for them to do it. They'll move around on the board wherever they want to, okay? They're not just going to start spelling stuff unless you've already been talking to them for a minute before somehow. But they'll go around the board themselves. They'll kind of get a feel for it. Then you can have one person say something. Don't have everyone asking a bunch of different questions at once. This is going to overwhelm them. If you were on the phone with someone and you have 10 people yelling at you different things, you're going to be like, what? And not answer any questions. Or you're going to pick one question to answer and then they're all not going to know what question you're answering. You need to be patient, be calm, cool, collected, and just be like, hi, is anyone there? And they'll answer. Ask them what their name is. That's scary because they're going to spell something out usually or they're going to just say something random. That can happen too. Um, there's a lot of misconception about if people are moving the board or not. Do you trust the people you're playing with? That's all I have to say to that. Um, like I said, I don't even touch it, but I know without a doubt that Ouija boards are real because of the situations I've been in. I know it's not just them moving it, and sometimes you get proof because it's not just the board doing things. Like I said, that's the medium to the spirit world. That's the bridge to it, okay? And then once you activate that, other things can happen. 
you've all heard of stories of things happening when Ouija boards are being in use and that is 100% without a doubt real. And if you clicked on this video for confirmation, this is me saying yes, I totally believe in that. And if that's not enough for you, then I don't know, go out and get your proof then. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed. That's pretty much all I have to say. Be very careful if you are going to use this tool, okay? It's October, so that's why I wanted to make this video. I was like, it's spooky season, and I just have had this video on my list of videos I want to do. I'm passionate about being very careful about Ouija boards. I was very passionate about, like, not using them, honestly, for a little bit. Just, like, me not touching them because I've been specifically told, like, me in specific is not supposed to use them. Um, and I know my inner desires, I know why, but, um, there's also things that I'm like, I don't really know exactly why the spirits told me that, but I'll trust you because also my own intuition for other reasons is telling me that. So that's the only reason why I'm going to trust that. It's all about trusting. Should I do this? Is this the right thing for me to do? Like, why don't you go get a deck of cards? deck of tarot cards so much safer okay that's a higher vibrational way of communicating with spirits okay um get a nice little crystal necklace and use it as a pendulum that's really close to a ouija board it's like yes and no that's all you really need okay you don't really need a ouija board you don't really need a pendulum or tarot cards either you just need yourself you are the medium the board itself is next to nothing it's just it's like the pencil that you're writing with you you need that to actually like see something that you're writing but you have all the thoughts that you're writing in your head you have all the ideas yourself so up to you if you guys want to do the Ouija board or not I wish you luck with it I hope you follow the rules and I know one of the rules is that you are supposed to do it with other people. And I have heard, I've been researching if it's okay to do it by yourself. And I am a little bit of a rebel, okay? I always say F the rules. I always say, you know, rules. I don't always say rules want to be broken. I definitely don't say that. But um, in this case, like, who made the rules, though? I don't know. I definitely didn't meet them. But in my personal opinion, I don't think there's anything wrong with writing in the dirt your own Ouija board and using it by yourself. Um, that's just me. Like, that doesn't draw any red flags. But, like, I wouldn't call it a Ouija board. Like, I don't get why there's this label with it. Like, but if you're just talking to a spirit outside and you're having trouble communicating and you just want them to, you know, spell something out for you, I feel like you should totally make your own talking board in the grass if that's what you desire. So I hope you guys got the info you needed from this video. And um, I hope you join me next week because we're going to be talking about Sage in the House. I'm going to show you how to do it, I think. So that should be pretty fun. Um, Love and light, and the hybrid children are coming soon.